An accidental leak that probably happened on purpose. A face that scared his own daughter to tears. Celine freaking Dion. Stay tuned to find out what you may not know about Ryan Reynolds' Deadpool. For many people, it's hard to separate Ryan Reynolds and Deadpool. It doesn't help that Reynolds has made a career out of playing fast-talking and quirky comedic characters who could easily be described as Deadpool-esque. While Reynolds undoubtedly has a good sense of humor, that's really where the comparison ends. His co-star Brianna Hildebrand told E! News, There's a conception that he's a lot like Deadpool, but he's just really funny and a really big sweetheart, actually. My favorite times on set were when he brought his kids because he became mushy dad, and it was really cute. It's no secret that Deadpool was in production hell for the longest time. Variety reported that Rhett Reese and Paul Wernick had been working on the script since 2010, but the timeline actually goes all the way back to the aftermath of Blade Trinity. While that production was marred with bizarre stories and incidents, it had one bright spot. It brought writer-director David S. Goyer and Ryan Reynolds together. According to IGN, Goyer revealed that he had loved working with Reynolds. He, New Line Cinema, and Marvel all wanted to work with the actor again thanks to his ability to be a funny, credible action star with some solid acting chops as well. Goyer was set to co-write and direct his version of Deadpool, but the movie wouldn't have been allowed to connect with Weapon X or Wolverine in any way because the X-Men belonged to the 20th Century Fox at the time. Turns out the rights issue ended up becoming a bigger stumbling block than initially expected, all but scrapping Goyer's plans. Eventually, Fox brought Reynolds into the fold as Deadpool, casting him in 2009's infamous X-Men Origins Wolverine. There are dozens of iconic lines scattered throughout Deadpool. Screenwriters Rhett Reese and Paul Wernick received praise for their outstanding script, but it was absolutely a collaborative effort. The actors were encouraged to improvise and come up with their own lines as revealed in a cast interview for Dez Hollywood. Ryan Reynolds confessed that he was happy to see some of his improv make the final cut, especially one of the most famous lines of the film, which came after Deadpool arrived at an empty-looking X-Mansion. It's a big house. It's funny that I only ever see two of you. It's almost like... The studio couldn't afford another X-Men. In a separate interview with Yahoo, Reese revealed that everyone cracked up laughing when they heard it for the first time, and even former 20th Century Fox chairman Jim Giannopoulos declared it his favorite line from the film. Ryan Reynolds' first rodeo as Deadpool didn't go according to plan. While X-Men Origins Wolverine promised to dive deep into Logan's past, including his history with Wade Wilson, the results were mixed, to say the least. For some reason, the Merc with a mouth was turned into Weapon 11, supposedly one of the most powerful mutants around, but one that couldn't talk. Reynolds did what he could with what he was given, and most viewers at the time agreed that he was an excellent choice to play Deadpool. The actor revealed that he actually shaped the character in a more significant way than expected, telling GQ, It was during a writer's strike, so all my dialogue in that movie I wrote. I mean, in the stage directions it just said Deadpool shows up, talks really fast, and makes a lot of jokes. That said, Reynolds knew that there would be fan backlash to how Deadpool turned out at the end of the film, and warned the studio about it. Alas, his pleas fell on deaf ears. Not only was Deadpool a triumph for Ryan Reynolds, but it was also a major success for director Tim Miller. While he had been widely recognized for his outstanding work in special effects and animation, the 2016 superhero movie marked his live-action directorial debut. As a result, fans were excited to see what Miller and Reynolds could cook up for the sequel, with a bigger budget and greater financial support. Unfortunately, the Dream Team didn't return for the sequel, as Miller made way for David Leitch to take over directorial duties. In a later interview with KCRW, Miller confirmed what everyone had long suspected. There was a fallout between him and Reynolds, with Miller saying, It became it became clear that Ryan wanted to be in control of the franchise. You can work that way as a director quite successfully, but I can't. I don't mind having a debate, but if I can't win, I don't want to play. Ryan Reynolds is no stranger to comic book franchises. Whether it was his guest appearance on Sabrina the Teenage Witch or his starring role as Nick Walker in R.I.P.D., it's clear that the Canadian actor has a passion for these properties. However, there's no doubt that Deadpool is the role that's closest to his heart, especially since it took so long to get it right. The back and forth between Reynolds and the studio throughout the 2000s and 2010s is a story that's worthy of its own documentary, as the actor refused to give up on the film being made. I know, right? Whose balls did I have to fondle to get my very own movie? 
There was a point, though, when he decided to give them an ultimatum, as he revealed to GQ. Right before I took Green Lantern, I wrote a letter to my executive at Fox, saying, I'm gonna take this movie, Green Lantern, if you guys aren't gonna make Deadpool. I'm at the altar, about to say, I do to somebody else. But tell me you want to spend the rest of your life with me, because I want to spend the rest of my life with you. The response he received wasn't positive, stating that there was no intention to make the film. So he went on to make Green Lantern. That movie bombed, so there was a second chance for Reynolds and Fox to renew their vows. And please don't make the super suit green. Or animated. According to Den of Geek, despite the rumors of Deadpool being in active development for years, the tipping point for fans was when test footage leaked in July 2014. Suddenly, the awful memories of the character in X-Men Origins Wolverine were dead and buried, as the nearly two minutes of footage perfectly encapsulated everything that the wacky Merc was all about in the comics. While there might have been a few calls for the Deadpool movie to be made before, the demand became overwhelming after the footage dropped online. It was never revealed who actually leaked the footage. No one is ever likely to come forward and admit it, but Reynolds has brought up some possibilities. My mom was like, what does this button do? <laughs> <laughs> Guess we're making the movie now. He gave an indication of who it could be to Dezd Hollywood, saying, There has been a lot of speculation about that, and all I can say is that it was one of the four of us. Me, Rhett Reese, Tim Miller, or Paul Wernick. Somebody did it. Once Fox decided to give the thumbs up to a Deadpool movie, the pressure was on, since the budget was tight and the deadlines even tighter. As Ryan Reynolds revealed to Yahoo, there were 10 months between the first day of filming and the actual release date. With no time to lose, Reynolds and Tim Miller knew they didn't have long to get the suit right. The nerves dissipated when they finally saw the suit for the first time, with Reynolds saying, We cried. We just wept. Miller added that when he saw Reynolds in costume, he instantly knew that everything was going to work, and he sobbed again. Brett Reese and Paul Wernick were on the Deadpool journey with Ryan Reynolds for six years. Their patience was eventually rewarded, with the film entering production and their game-changing script being a foundation for the next era of superhero movies. Since Reese and Wernick had been part of the team from the get-go, Reynolds wanted them on set to provide their input and see the fruits of their labor. However, Reese revealed on Geeking Out that Fox didn't want to cough up the extra cash to have them present, so Reynolds paid out of his own pocket to have his collaborators around. Considering the $782.6 million that Deadpool made at the box office, the studio should have certainly reimbursed the star for his expenses later on. As a trained mercenary, Mr. Poole is an expert at all sorts of combat, whether it be military grade or hand-to-hand -hand shenanigans. The sight of Ryan Reynolds' Deadpool handling his katana swords showcased his absolute commitment to the cause. As the actor revealed to the National Post, he spent time with a katana expert on both the X-Men film and Deadpool to sharpen up his skills, saying, I remember my first day. The guy who was training me looked a lot like a guy who was going to make a necklace out of my teeth. That was sort of the gold standard that was set from early on. The training certainly paid off. Some of the best action scenes in the Deadpool films are a cut above the rest in the genre, mostly thanks to Wade Wilson's shiny blade. Blades. There's no denying that Wade Wilson's mug caught everyone off guard the first time they witnessed it. You look like an avocado. Had sex with an older, more disgusting avocado. Yeah. Makeup artist Bill Corso deserves all the credit in the world for successfully transforming Ryan Reynolds' face in such a convincing and unsettling way. He even managed to frighten the actor's young daughter, as Reynolds told Yahoo. It just made my daughter cry every time she came to the set. He added that the makeup process would take up to four hours every day, and that the mask could get uncomfortable, but the discomfort was ultimately worth it. Not just for the results on screen, but also because he could peel off his face at the end of the day and chuck it at the crew for a good laugh. Isn't it weird that Ryan Reynolds always seems to have the red and black Deadpool suit nearby whenever he needs it? There's a reason for it. As Reynolds told Yahoo, there was no way I was not gonna leave with a suit. Reynolds was a producer on the Deadpool film, so technically he does have some claims on owning the suit. Perhaps more importantly, he's involved in a bulk of the franchise's marketing, which often requires him to be dressed in character, so it makes logical sense for him to have the suit readily available. Fox didn't seem to have a problem with it either, since he practically became a brand ambassador in exchange for a single costume. Considering the Deadpool movies have made over a billion dollars for the studio, it was always unlikely that the execs would complain too much about it. As much as Deadpool is all about the laughs and action on screen, Ryan Reynolds has used his influence as the comic book character to make a difference in other people's lives. He meets many children through the Make-A-Wish Foundation and leaves a lasting impact. As it turns out, the children do the same to Reynolds as well. Back in 2016, Reynolds posted an emotional tribute to young Connor McGarth. 
after the 13-year-old died of cancer. The two had met through the foundation after McGarth made a wish to be the first person to see Deadpool, and Reynolds and his team obliged, with Reynolds saying, I traveled up to Edmonton, Alberta to surprise him with a rough cut of the film. He added that even though the film wasn't complete, he quote, never felt luckier to get to be Wade Wilson, as he saw McGarth's joy at watching the movie. Considering how much time and energy Ryan Reynolds has invested in the Deadpool franchise, it's clear that many people view him as the brains behind the operation. That said, he's still working with a studio, and everyone knows that the person who signs the checks is the one who gets the final say. Well, about that. As per The Wrap, a new deal was negotiated between Reynolds and Fox after the success of the first film. Not only did the actor receive a sizable pay bump to return for the sequel, but he also secured creative control and casting approval. Undoubtedly, this also explains why the rift between him and Tim Miller was only going to go one way in the end. When Deadpool 2 was released, many fans wondered who played the role of Juggernaut, since it certainly wasn't Vinnie Jones under the metal helmet. The CGI and voice gave nothing away, but it was eventually revealed that Ryan Reynolds pulled double duty on set and lent his talents to bring Charles Xavier's half-brother to life in this wacky film. We needed to give Ryan another franchise, so I'm just kidding. While it was a pleasant reveal for fans, it was also equally surprising for his castmates. Stefan Capisi, the actor who voiced Colossus, told The Hollywood Reporter that he had no idea Reynolds was playing another character in the film, saying, Brian is always there when I'm working on Colossus, helping me with the lines and giving me ideas. Then I saw Ryan getting into the CGI costume, and I'm like, what's going on, man? Did I miss something? As soon as Disney bought Fox, fans wondered when Deadpool would make his arrival in the House of Mouse. Many expected him to show up in Avengers Endgame, or a new Marvel show on Disney+, Plus. but his first crossover with the MCU was in a hilarious skit with Korg when they reacted to the Free Guy trailer. However, Ryan Reynolds had a different pitch the first time around, suggesting a much darker trajectory for the Merc with the Mouth, revealing to IGN, I wanted to do a short film of Deadpool interrogating the hunter who killed Bambi's mom. But the whole gist of it is that Deadpool is actually just a huge fan. For obvious reasons, the Disney execs turned their noses up at the idea, since it would have made Deadpool a bigger villain than Thanos in an instant. So Reynolds went back to the drawing board and pitched them the Deadpool Korg video, which was much better received by the suits. In the comics, Deadpool loves B. Arthur, and how could he not? The Deadpool film decided to respect canon and pay tribute to Wade Wilson's obsession with Arthur by having him wear a shirt adorned with her photo. According to GQ, Ryan Reynolds paid $20,000 to use Arthur's likeness in the film. While the actor didn't confirm the amount, he said, It was more a question of talking to the estate and the family personally and just reaching out and saying, we're gonna take care of this, and there was a little donation made to her charity. It was a nice touch because it's clear to see that Deadpool's razor-sharp wit was directly influenced by Dorothy Zbornek's sarcastic charm. Charm. Deadpool 2 had its fair share of surprises, such as Alan Tudyk and Matt Damon as two self-referential hillbillies, but Brad Pitt's blink-and-you-miss-it appearance as Vanisher was the one that everyone was talking about afterwards. According to ComicBook.com, Pitt had actually been in consideration to play Cable before he was forced to step aside due to scheduling conflicts. The question is, how did the production convince the Academy Award-winning actor to make a cameo as one of the most forgettable comic book characters in the world? Uh, and then there's just this reveal right at his death that it's actually Brad Pitt. He just thought that was so funny, and because of that, he was in. That was all down to Ryan Reynolds, he explained to Entertainment Tonight. I was told all he wants is a cup of coffee, and I said, like, a franchise or just one individual cup of coffee? And I was told one individual cup of coffee, which was really his way of saying, I'm doing it for nothing. And it was a total solid and the nicest thing anyone could do. Was anyone truly surprised when Celine Dion found her way onto the Deadpool 2 soundtrack and the Merc with the Mouth performed a dance routine in the Ashes music video? Director David Leach told Entertainment Weekly that he and music supervisor John Houlihan found the track Ashes for the movie but needed someone to record it. When he brought up the ballad to Ryan Reynolds, he only had one person in mind, a fellow Canadian. Leach elaborated, saying, And he's like, you know who we should get? We should approach Celine. She's an incredible singer, she's amazing, but she's also someone who works in the sort of subversive Deadpool universe. Fortunately, when the team approached Dion, she accepted, since her son was a Deadpool fan and she loved the song, of course. Ryan Reynolds has been open about his struggles with anxiety, telling Variety that it's something he's suffered with his whole life. 
While making Deadpool was a passion project for him, it also took its toll on him mentally. He confessed, I never ever slept, or I was sleeping at a perfect right angle, just sitting straight, constantly working at the same time. Reynolds admitted that he put immense pressure on himself because of the fans. They'd waited so long for a movie that he felt obligated to deliver something that exceeded all their expectations. In a separate interview with GQ, Reynolds said that he experienced somewhat of a nervous breakdown after Deadpool was finished. When he booked appointments to see doctors, they all told him that he was suffering from anxiety. Ultimately, Reynolds credited his wife with helping him get through it and being by his side. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite anti-heroes are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.